So Shannon, looking ahead, you've developed really incredible innovative partnership structures as well as new funding models. Uh, in fact, I, I think you are helping lead some of the most innovative that I've seen uh, in, in the private sector as well as the government sector. And, and you've helped build the Indigenous Growth Fund, and it's completely changed how Indigenous businesses not only form, but they operate. What are your thoughts on what's required for a sustainable future, and what should founders do to make sure that they have access to economic opportunity? Thank you for the question, and I just want to say hello to all the panelists. Uh, joined a little bit late. Um, that's a great question. Um, over the past uh, few years, we've been working uh, uh, with other Indigenous economic uh, organizations on highlighting uh, what are the gaps, what are the, the things that we need to have in place to ensure that we, we are participating in the economy. So uh, the organizations like the uh, Canadian Council for Aboriginal Business, CANDU, uh, the National Indigenous Economic Development Board, Indigenous Works, and NACA, uh, along with uh, a number of organizations that uh, acted as advisory and peer review, we developed the National Indigenous Economic Strategy. And there's 107 calls to prosperity uh, within that document, and you can download it at nie-strategy.ca. Uh, it covers people, infrastructure, lands, and finance. There's not one thing that allows us to participate. There's a, there's a, there's a number of uh, areas that we, we need to address. Uh, when you look at people, we need, a, we need to solve the, uh, we need to provide some options for financial literacy, mentorship, uh, participation. Uh, we need information. Um, there's too many, too many sources of information that entrepreneurs get bounced around, and we need a single source uh, access. Uh, we need a participating boards, uh, corporate, corporate Canada, uh, the financial, the, the health, the education sector. It doesn't reflect us at all. So uh, we need to have more inclusion within those entities to ensure that it's reflective of the services that we need. Um, we need we need a capital. We need a labor force planning. Our, our population is still growing faster than mainstream Canada. And we have uh, uh, an issue with, uh, with, with age in Canada and um, not having enough people. Uh, but in the Indigenous community, we have more than enough people. As, as long as we, uh, we have some sort of plan to ensure that they're uh, able to participate in the economy, whether through business or working. Uh, infrastructure, this is always comes up with, uh, with uh, boil water advisors, housing issues. Uh, our, our community is still considered 63rd if you're gonna measure globally uh, how, we, how we measure with other countries. Our community is, 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 is in poverty. Uh, we need basic services. Um, we need access to broadband and to participate within the economy. Um, no community is successful without access to lands. Our lands were taken from us. Uh, the world uh, got very wealthy because of our lands. Our natural capital was eroded. We need access back to our lands. We need a mechanism to ensure that our communities can plan from that. So the government uh, and uh, Canada needs to address these issues. There's outstanding land claims that need to be resolved right now. Uh, we need to participate in, in any equity projects going forward, any, any resource projects going forward, and we need a mechanism to allow our communities to participate. It's still considered the highest risk capital to, uh, to lend to a community to participate with equity into a, into a project, and that, that shouldn't be the case. Uh, it's just reflective of, of the barriers that exist for our people. Uh, and on the finance side, you know, revenue share with, with government on, on taxation of, of resource projects within our own territories. We have 300 plus court cases that affirm our rights and title. We, we need to affirm that. We need to be participate. We need to participate on all projects going forward. Uh, there's a number of uh, uh, calls to prosperity, and I invite everybody to to. to to read those. Uh, a big one on the panel today is the procurement. And 
uh, calls prosperity number 94 to 100 call for participation in, in the in, in procurement. It's, it's a bit $1 billion opportunity if we achieve at least a 5% target. And for the past 30 years, we've been less than 1%, mostly because of the, infra uh, the, the infrastructure, the, the process. Uh, we are in a planning process right now with the same group of Indigenous financial institutions on planning with the government on how we can co-develop a new process. And one of the big calls is to create a national Indigenous uh, procurement institute. Um, so that's, we're in the process of, of, of seeing how that can can become a reality. Um, so these types of things are all things that we need to put in place. And institutions is a big part of uh, the United Declarations on the Rights of Indigenous People, providing us the ability to provide to plan and create for our people because we're the best place. We're we're the best people to do that. Miigwech. Thank you, Shannon. And um, I'd like to also offer for any, I know there's some non-Indigenous companies that, that that have certainly joined us today, that, that we have an obligation also. And from the procurement standpoint, there are a lot of opportunities to connect with some incredible Indigenous-owned uh, businesses out there and to in incorporate them in what you're doing. I'm doing the same. I've got a side coffee roastery business, and we've created a holiday giving uh, box uh, for the upcoming holidays. And in addition to our coffee, we're adding pancakes as well as a maple syrup that's actually coming from one of two different Indigenous communities. So there are lots of ways that, 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 that we can all be part of this solution. And it's an incredible opportunity to, to share economic opportunity.